As a dungeon master, when it comes to magic items, I think there are two schools of thought. The first being, holy crap, I don't want to break my campaign so nobody gets anything that might even be remotely overpowered. And the second being, eh, have some cool shit because I'm going to definitely give my bad guys some cool stuff that's definitely going to mess y'all up anyway, so have at it. Personally, I fall into the second camp a lot more than the first because I feel as though people want to get cool stuff. I mean, I think if you asked 100 D&D 5e players if they want to play in a year-long campaign without ever finding a legendary magic item, or if they want to play in a campaign where they will, by far and away players would prefer to play in the one with cool stuff because it's just more fun to them. And a big part of the Dungeon Master's job in any Dungeons & Dragons game is to try to make it a fun experience for everyone. Now, I've talked before about overpowered magic items that will break your Dungeons & Dragons 5e campaign, but what about the ones that won't? That's what today's video is about. Legendary magic items that players will enjoy getting their hands on that you as a dungeon master can feel comfortable with handing out. And some that hopefully will even inspire you during your 5th edition campaign. Item number one, and in no particular order, is an item that I absolutely am in love with and can recommend to dungeon masters without hesitation, is the cubic gate. I absolutely love, 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 love this legendary item. This cube is three inches across and radiates palpable magical energy. The six sides of the cube are each keyed to a different plane of existence, one of which is the material plane. The other sides are linked to planes determined by the GM. For me, this is a magic item that just checks all the boxes. It's a party-centric item. It's not a player-centric item. It can be easily surrounded with a bit of mystery, linking to unknown planes, at least until the players start trying to use it. It has fantastic story elements that can be built, uh, built around it by the Dungeon Master. And additionally, the Dungeon Master decides what planes it connects to, not the players. And in turn, it might even give players pause from learning a spell like Plane Shift, which again, you as the Dungeon Master do not have control over, and thus you have to be prepared for anything when they take that. Unlike the Amulet of the Plains, the Cubic Gate has charges, which will limit your players from abusing it like that amulet. And it is one of the very few rare and legendary items that could be given to players during Session 1, Level 1, and not break your game. Honestly, even as I was scripting this video right now, all I can think about is how cool it would be to run a Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition campaign where my players literally do get this legendary item at the end of the first session. And the players will still appreciate this because they can go into a fight that's maybe a little too tough for them and in an absolute pinch, they can vamp out of it by using the cube's plane shift ability. And there are still plenty of shenanigans the players can pull off with this that they will most likely try, like trying to stand over a 10,000 foot drop and using the gate spell function to lure flightless enemy from another plane to their death and so on. But this item is just absolutely fantastic. Great for dungeon masters, fun for players of all levels, and arguably the most story enhancing magic item in all of Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Next up, we have the only weapon on our list, the Moonblade. I'll be honest, I much prefer to give out party based items over player based items, because if you give one player a badass sword, Usually the other players want something dope too, and that's a short track to overpowering your party and snowballing on you a bit, which isn't the end of the world, but certainly something to think about. But that doesn't change anything with how much I adore the Moonblade. From a Dungeon Master standpoint, this weapon is just about as perfect as you can get. It's almost a blank canvas that you get to add as many or as few mods to it as your little heart desires. Want to make it a defender? Go for it. Want to make it a simple plus one magic sword? No problem. Think it should be a plus two instead? Sure. Want to make it a vorpal blade and a ring of storing in one? Do it. But what's cool about this magic item is that it has such cool implied history and the fact that it, quote, lies dormant and functions as a normal sword until it finds the right heir. Depending on your style as a DM, I see no reason why you couldn't allow this to pass a detect magic spell without revealing the fact that it is magical while it is still dormant. It is a legendary item after all. 
because of this. It sets up the perfect opportunity to be a bit of a mystery during downtimes, and we as Dungeon Masters could always use more opportunities to add interesting story elements while our players are resting for the night, right? I mean, what happens if the players go to sleep only to find the plain Jane sword with some cool runes on it has moved from the human fighter scabbard and is next to the elven ranger when they wake up. Another detect magic spell again reveals nothing. So many cool scenes built around a very simple concept and coupled with the blank canvas, I think a creative dungeon master could easily build several sessions around this legendary item. Our third item on the list might have dungeon master screaming no at their screens, but I promise this item isn't nearly as game breaking as you might think it is at first glance. The legendary item I'm talking about, the rod of resurrection. First, let's look at the two functions it has. It casts a six level heal spell for one charge, which is admittedly great with its static 70 hit points, or it can cast the seventh level spell resurrection for five charges. The rod itself only has five charges and only regains one charge per day and naturally has a 5% chance to self-destruct whenever it hits zero charges. Here's why I like this item. Because by giving this to your players, you, as the Dungeon Master, have the ability to throw whatever you want at them now. CR be damned. And it also does some really great things to the players. One, they get the feeling of getting their hands on a super powerful legendary item. Naturally, with the DM having the opportunity to push them through some tough content to earn it. Two, the players will gain a confidence boost and be more apt to take on dangerous foes that they might otherwise run away from. And three, and here's the real fun bit. While at first they will feel empowered, eventually when things start to get tough, you've actually given them a resource that must be managed. Do they spend a charge to heal for 70 or do they try to keep it fully charged for resurrection? If they cast resurrection now on a dead party member, are they gonna lose the rod forever? If they lose the rod now, will they be able to make it back home from the Shadowfell? Meanwhile, you as a DM have handed them a powerful item that will allow you to have more flexibility with your encounters and build a story around monsters that might make more sense even if they would normally uh, have been considered too high of a challenge or CR. Great legendary item, and one that if you and your group enjoy mega dungeons or hex crawls, can equate to a lot of fun. Legendary item number four on our list is the Iron Flask. Man, do I love this legendary item. This item is an absolute gem of a powerful magic item that creative dungeon masters can 100% build their D&D 5e campaigns around. If you're not familiar with the Iron Flask, it's sort of like a genie bottle, trapping any creatures not native to the plane uh, that you're on in it with a wisdom save, of course. When you let them out, they obey you for an hour, and yes, you can put them back in, but there's some flexibility there for DMs to tailor the item to suit their campaign a little better. Technically, the flask says if you've trapped the creature before, they get advantage on that saving throw to go back in, but it also says that they are friendly to you and obey your commands for an hour. So I see no reason why you couldn't let the players order the creature back into the flask so mechanically, willingly fail the saving throw. Or if you want to randomize whenever they get to try to save again via a die roll or even just every third time, etc. This item reminds me a bit of Inuyasha and the Beads of Subjugation, and that's how I would use it in my campaign as a dungeon master. If players find a trapped demon inside that they need to help them along their quest with information you want to spoon feed them as a DM or passwords to unlock doors or to help them navigate a ruined city that the demon helped ransack 2000 years ago and on and on. I mean, I love the idea of the players fighting a newly resurrected ancient power like a lich and finding a flask of the lich trapped a demon in as a bit of a servant when they were still alive trying to attain lichdom and the sort of three-party conflict the demon might have against the players who are using it but also in its task and goals to seek revenge against that lich. There's some really creative stuff you can do there. This is one item that I would suggest you take a lot of liberties with as a DM and customize. Just because the vanilla version in the Dungeon Master's Guide says that the creature are all friendly and obey all commands, doesn't mean that they might not argue with the players or try to get them killed by omitting certain facts. Basically, use passive resistance and give it more chances to break free, or don't tell your players that the effects wear off after an hour. 
Just an all-around great item, and it deserves to be on this list of best legendary items to build your 5e campaign around, no doubt. And finally, I want to put an item on this list that I've talked about in a previous video of overpowered magic items that risk breaking your campaign, and that's the Cloak of Invisibility. Now, why would I include this item on both a list of magic items to build your campaign around and a list of items that might break a campaign? Because frankly, it deserves to be on both lists. Also, I want to drive home the fact that the Dungeon Masters don't need to be afraid of breaking their campaigns if they award magic items with their eyes wide open. Is the Cloak of Invisibility powerful? Absolutely. Can it break your campaign? Certainly. But it doesn't have to. What the cloak can do to a campaign is change a dynamic. This is an item that I promise players will love and protect at all costs. It's an item they will fall back on as a safety net. But if you get the idea that your campaign has to stay status quo with your encounter building and how you think people will tackle campaign challenges, it can open a lot more windows than it closes doors, so to speak. So be flexible there. If you want some ideas on how it will affect your campaign and some more tips on this particular item, I suggest you check out that video and I'll throw a link to it down in the description box below. Uh, at the time of recording this video, that video has over 650,000 views and a 95% thumbs up rating. So I feel like it probably has some good info in it if you haven't seen it yet. And one more bonus item before we get out of here, and that's the legendary effect. 3D chain. The AC bonus is ridiculously strong, sure, but the concept of being outright immune to fire damage and the ability to stand on and walk across molten rock has such a Zelda-esque tone to it that I just think it's super cool. If you want to incorporate a fetch quest where the players need to acquire this item before being able to fetch something else, this thing just oozes cool inspiration to me, so take a good look at it. It's pretty dope. All right, guys, so what did I miss? Should this list have had the dragon masks or more legendary weapons? Have you ever had the courage to give your players not just a magic item, but a legendary magic item? And more importantly, what was that experience like? Did it wreck your campaign or did you build your campaign around it? Let us know in the comments down below. I, of course, want to give a huge shout out to my amazing patrons over at welcomeadventures.com. If you guys like this content, you want to support more content like this, Welcome Adventures is a great way to do that while grabbing some rewards for yourself. Speaking of which, I have one spot available in our upcoming Pathfinder 2nd Edition campaign. We had somebody fall out kind of at the last minute right as we were getting ready to start it. So we pushed it back one more month to January. So if you guys are watching this video and you want to jump in that Pathfinder 2e campaign, learn Pathfinder with us along with some great players that are already pre-vetted and people that have already been patrons for a while. So I've been doing one-on-ones. I know them pretty well. It's going to be a really fun campaign. This is going to take place on Tuesdays and it's going to be in the middle of the day US time. So it's great if you work from home or if you are Euro in European time, uh, then it'll it'll probably be great for you. It'll be evenings for you guys. I think we already have somebody from, uh, from the UK in that game. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. If you're interested in that game, I, I do want to chat with people before I just throw the spot up for anybody to sign up with. Uh, so message me over on Discord. I'll put a link down to the Taking 20 Discord, the community Discord. Message me over there. If you guys haven't joined the Taking 20 uh, Discord, do it. Uh, it's a great community. We have thousands of members in there. They talk about all kinds of games and they put games together and so on and so on. It's really, really uh, a fun place. So message me over at Discord if you're interested in that game. If this is your first time here and you love role-playing games as much as I do, I would love to have you subscribe. Every week I put out videos on GM tips, player tips, tutorials, and more. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, just hit the subscribe button down below and come join us. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody and may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.